In order for your tomato plants to give you nice crops of fat, delicious tomatoes, mmm. You need to learn how to fertilize correctly. Fertilizer is probably one of the biggest factors to having a successful crop. And in this video, I'm gonna be going through the method that I've been using and kind of the theory behind it so that you understand what exactly is happening and why you need to fertilize in the way that you do. So first of all, it can be very confusing to pick out a tomato fertilizer. You walk into the garden center, you see all these boxes of fertilizers on the shelf and you just scratch your head thinking, how am I gonna decide? Well, the market hasn't made it easy, but hopefully this video will. First, let's break it down into organic and inorganic fertilizers. So obviously there's a huge craze these days to grow organic without the use of synthetic manufactured chemicals, and that's fantastic. But one thing you should keep in mind is that typically the inorganic fertilizers are faster acting and more reliable in terms of getting the results out of them that you expect. When you feed your plants with an organic fertilizer like bone meal or chicken manure pellets, sure, there's great nutritional value there, but are they going to produce the results that you're looking for? Maybe not. I personally don't have a problem with inorganic fertilizers purchased from a local store that are reputable and tested. With synthetics, if you pour it on, you'll see results within a few days. That's why I employ water-soluble fertilizers in addition to organic amendments like composted manure and bone meal. I know a lot of people out there are going to say, Lucas, why are you using chemicals? You're a bad person. In fact, most of these people have probably already clicked off this video. But I don't have an issue with using these types of fertilizers for a couple reasons. First, plants absorb the elements in the fertilizer they need, so it's not like you'll be eating tomatoes full of garbage. Second, these fertilizers are tested and approved for use in Canada, where I live. Is it possible to get great results using purely organic fertilizing methods? Sure but it's a lot more difficult and inconsistent in my opinion. And this causes me to stick to hybrid organic and organic fertilizing methods. So how I typically feed my tomato plants is by starting off in the spring with a good base of composted cow manure, sheep manure, typically some bone meal, and even some ground eggshells. This is all organic and it'll give the garden a good base foundation for what it'll need to grow throughout the season. The garden still needs a boost throughout the season though, and for that, I typically start out with miracle Grow Bloom Booster Fertilizer, which I'm not affiliated with, but it's what I've been using. It has an NPK ratio of 15, 30, 15, and the NPK ratio is so important when deciding which fertilizer to purchase. It represents the ratio of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium that's contained within the fertilizer, and these are the three major macronutrients that plants need to grow and develop. So when you walk into Home Depot and pick up a box of fertilizer labeled 101010, you can be pretty sure it'll contain 10% nitrogen, 10% phosphorus, and 10% potassium, with the remaining 70% being filler material. Nitrogen is for leaf growth, phosphorus is for root and flower development, and potassium is for fruit development and overall health of the plant. When I plant out my tomatoes, I'm really focused on establishing a nice solid root system and leaf canopy that will effectively absorb water, nutrients, and sunlight throughout the growing season to feed the plant. In order to do this, I ensure that the fertilizer I'm using contains a good amount of phosphorus, nitrogen, and potassium. Something like a balanced 10-10-10 or 5-5-5 should work wonders. Personally, I use miracle Girl Bloom Booster 15-30-15 from planting up until plants start setting fruit and the first tomatoes are about the size of a marble. At this point, I stop the Bloom Booster and start using miracle Grow 18-18-21 tomato plant food, which has a higher amount of potassium to help develop the fruits and maintain healthy plant growth. I mix up these soluble fertilizer solutions and apply them to my tomato garden about once a week, according to the directions on the package. This is so important because if you don't follow the directions, you could risk burning your plants. There's not necessarily a best ratio, but you just gotta make sure that nitrogen is either lower or equal to the other elements. Too much nitrogen is a huge mistake when growing tomatoes. I've made this mistake in the past and it put most of the energy into leaf growth, resulting in large, lush, dark green plants at the expense of having less flowers and fruit. So just be very careful with that. Keep your nitrogen levels lower or at most as high as phosphorus and potassium levels. Finally, I want to highlight the difference between granular and water-soluble fertilizers. Granular fertilizers are ones you mix into the soil, usually at the beginning of the season, and then a couple times throughout the season, to side dress. 
It comes in the form of these little granules or pellets. These granular types are typically more slow release, but personally, I prefer the water soluble fertilizers because they're more targeted, controlled, and fast acting. If you have a drip irrigation system, which I highly recommend, you can also set up a fertilizer injector, which will automatically fertilize your garden so you don't have to. I hope this video was helpful in giving you some insight into fertilizing your tomatoes and other fruiting crops. Fertilizing is really a key to success in the garden, and it's one of the reasons I think I've had such good success with my harvests over the years. My name's Lucas. If you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments section. And also, please go check out my Instagram account, at LucasGrowsBest. And I hope you guys have a great day. Take care.